Justin Jinzel. <laughs> okay, so hi, I'm Jewel. I I'm presenting Euphoria because I binge watch it in like two weeks. And also my my course is media arts and studies. So I'm just gonna <laughs> so I was just like watching this alone and then I was screaming at it. And it's why watching the show Euphoria is the most effective form of birth control. So next slide. So this is what we're gonna do, you know. This after watching Euphoria, this is what I wanted to do. This is not to be violent because I like babies. <laughs> and you know, I'm the type to be like on TikTok to like, oh my god, I love babies. But then after this one, I was just like, yeah. I'm never having kids because I don't want them to go through this. <laughs> not that I'm like a model teen when I was young. I'm, I'm not really the child that parents are proud of. But still, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't want him to go through that. But I'll explain. Okay, next. So the definition of terms muna tayo para medyo formal. So euphoria, it's a feeling or, or a state of intense excitement and happiness. It's also what you like reach doing drugs. Don't quote me on this because I'm on camera. Um, it's also the HBO show where, according to Google, a group of high school students, as it's about a group of high school students as they navigate love and friendships in a world of drugs, sex, trauma, and social media. Birth control used to prevent pregnancies. Y'all know this. We're, we're all adults. Forms of birth control include hormonal pills, contraceptive sponges, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, we love birth control over here, but like nothing worked for me as well as watching Euphoria. <laughs> okay, moving on, next. So contraceptive failure rates, guys. Condoms fail 18%, 12%, 9%. You have a chance of having a kid, and this fact has never scared me more in my entire life as someone who has made some bad, bad decisions. So next. <laughs> um, so abstinence is the only thing that's 100% or that will like secure you unless you're the Virgin Mary, which congratulations, but like abstinence is the only birth control that is 100% effective. And I'm not like gonna preach to you guys and be like, yay, you be abstinent, but you know, it's kind of hard. I don't know, wait long, next slide. So <laughs> how to be abstinent is just don't have sex and profit, like the financial, emotional, mental like privileges that you get just from not having the stress is okay but that's not really realistic so the alternative is just watch euphoria <laughs> so euphoria induces abstinence through the sheer stress of watching teens make catastrophic decisions and i mean catastrophic like people are getting beaten up people are almost dying and i'm just like oh my god make better decisions jesus christ and then number two it's like you don't want to it, Impart mommy or daddy issues to your to the next generation. Like this is Nico. I was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was like, do you want to be the daddy and also the issue? Do you want to be the daddy issue? Like, do you want to be that? You don't want that, okay? You you don't want that for your children. So the family and relationship dynamics that come from childhood and parent attachment are so serious. I don't know, I think I'm just like very in deep multimedia arts and like reading a lot of psychology and relationship books lately. I think this is my 20s crisis. And also, if you have children and then you do this, like it's unplanned, you don't have birth control and you don't watch Euphoria, watch Euphoria right now, I swear to God. Therapy is expensive. It's like two to three K and that's not counting meds. Meds are expensive, I can attest. I'm unhinged, as you, can, <laughs> as you guys can see. <laughs> so me medicine and therapy is very expensive. So next. Okay, we're going to go to the character studies, et cetera, et cetera. Dito ako tatagal. Minimum spoilers. Have you guys watched Euphoria? Yes, besties. Daddy, but not a good daddy. Um, hot in the kissing booth, but not so hot here. He's the actual devil incarnate of a jock. If you want, you'll know what I mean when you watch Euphoria, right? Right? It, it just, so, <laughs> uh, father, son, they have like dedicated episodes each show. Uh, props for the cinematography and everything that Euphoria has. Good writing. He may be, you know, <laughs> both of them may be. Um, and the outlet he has chosen for his repression from a traditionally masculine culture and current role in society is not good. Asterisk, because I don't want to spoil. But basically, this type of repression that's supposed to be personal, it, it becomes a thing in Nate's history when you focus on his episode. 
And it really does like mess him up for, I hope not life, I hope just for his senior high school and then like magically he gets better. So Nate's anger, treatment of women and actions point back to his upbringing and less than desirable childhood. And just as a side note, like, uh, I watch a video essay on Euphoria and how it's actually about empathy because I want to kill this guy <laughs> when I first watched it. Like, I just wanted to smack him. But it also points you to a history of people in general where their upbringing and their general um, growing up phase can affect how they are now. So you kind of put yourself in their shoes and you're like, damn, now I can't be violent towards you. I kind of understand. <laughs> okay. So next, uh, minimum spoilers. Uh, so like I talked about abstinence and like T, Cassie, they say abstinence is like a spiritual journey. Maybe that's my goal for next year. And Maddie is like, bitch, I don't believe the word you're saying. Same. And it's like, why? Because you love to be loved. And Cassie is, has an absentee father who and experienced object, objectification from early teens, which led to this. And like... It's actually like if you've if you've scrolled through Twitter, you see people like uh, pitting on Cassie and Maddie. Sorry to people who didn't watch Euphoria. I'm so sorry. I'm just rambling, but <laughs> um, it leads to her um, being kind of villainized for being who she is when there's so much more going on underneath. And with Maddie, this is just like a side thing, but she's like screaming at her parents for having a toxic relationship, like. Hey, uh, you guys don't even talk. You guys just like talk when you pass salt or when you pass, uh, when you talk about bills. Dad has been sleeping on the couch for months. I don't want that. I want a devoted thing. And she'll take that devoted thing even if it means abuse, which is really sad. And Rue, my, my queen, Zendaya, I love her. Drugs. She, she does a lot of drugs. Um, <laughs> absentee father as well, asterisk, my spoiler. But um, there are a lot of parallels when I kind of deep dive into Euphoria and how they have dialogue and how they interact with people and events in their school and within their social circles. So next, sorry naging seryoso from being like guys be abstinent to he, we all have trauma. So <laughs> next. Next po. So, okay lang po. So, <laughs> um, this is a uh, quote from a book that I was reading. It's an overwhelming majority of us come from dysfunctional families in which we were thought we were not okay, where we were shamed verbally and or physically abused and emotionally neglected even as we were also taught to believe that we were loved. So it becomes acceptable for us somehow to accept that and by continuing to like have cycles and cycles where we don't, uh, fix uh, fix the problems or stop the cycle. It just continues on and on. Am I saying don't have sex? I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> what's euphoria? <laughs> I don't even know at this point. But yes, uh, this is all about love by Bell Hooks. You should also read it. Anyway, um, TLDR. Yes, well. Uh, so Euphoria could do a better job in pushing celibacy. Like, it doesn't glamorize sex and drugs for me at all because I was just really uncomfortable the entire time. I was just like, I don't know. I don't want any part of this, man. I don't want this drama. I want to live, laugh, and love, like they say. You know, I want to live, laugh, love like a white woman with no problems. Just that's all I want. So it's effective birth control. It also makes you self-reflect on love in relationships. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 